Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In this episode, we're going to take a look at another sub $100 yellow DPSS laser. This time it's come all the way from Australia, so let's stick this on the bench and take a look. So in a previous episode, we've taken a look at yellow DPSS lasers um, of one description or another. Uh, this was one I picked up off eBay secondhand. Um, this is a Melis Griot uh, 561 nanometer um, yellow DPSS laser. Uh, pretty nice, but you know, they're pretty rare and pretty hard to get hold of. I mean, brand new, you know, thousands of dollars, like I said in the last video. Um, then I picked up this um, off Alibaba um, for about $100. This is a 574 nanometer um, yellow DPSS laser module. Um, pretty nice, uh, really, really nice, you know, really, really good deal for the money. Um, at the back of that video, um, a fellow called Paul from Laserland um, messaged me and said, would I want to review one of his uh, yellow DPSS lasers that he's got? So this is what's arrived today. Um, I'll link in Laserland Australia down below. Um, again, this is sub $100. Um, in Australian dollars, um, it's 100 Australian dollars, but obviously US dollars and Australian dollars are two different things. I think it comes out at like 75 US bucks. Um, so if it is what it says it is, it'll be fantastic. Um, the claim specifications are 15 to 20 milliwatts at 561 nanometers, uh, which should be just about yellow, sort of at the green end of yellow on the spectrum. Um, yeah, so somewhere between 15, 20 milliwatts should be pretty nice to see. Um, we've also got analog modulation as well. So we've got some anti-static uh, bags. Uh, looks like he sent me two. Um, fantastic. Um, actually, since I've just uh, since I've just torn all this stuff out of bubble wrap and it is quite a hot, dry day, um, even for Scotland, um, better put the anti-static strap on. Uh, just in case um, I don't have a particularly conductive floor so it would be a good idea um, to make sure that we don't damage anything. Let's open this up and see what we've got in here. Awesome. So there's our module. Um, in contrast to the one from Alibaba, uh, which was just a sort of bare silver uh, barrel module, this is actually mounted in a very nice heat sink. Um, we've got a fan at the back and then we've got the little driver board. So let's untangle this and see what we've got. So according to the paperwork and the silk screen that's on the PCB, which is very, very nice to see, um, you know, stops people from making mistakes. Um, we've got 12 volts in over here is our power supply. Um, this is red and black. And then we've got analog modulation in zero to five volts um, on yellow and black. Um, we've got the supply for the laser diode itself, which is over here. And then we've got supply for the fan. So let's, let's see if we've got some connectors that are kicking about that we can hook that up with. Perfect. So I've got a couple of connectors here. I don't want to snip the originals off. I'll maybe make a PCB for these. Um, let's hook it up to the power supply and see what we've got. So I have the laser module powered up now, uh, the fan's spinning. Uh, currently we don't have any output because we have to supply uh, 5 volts to our uh, analog modulation input. So let's do that just now. And there's our beam, absolutely fantastic. So it's a working module, most assuredly looks yellow to me. Um, incidentally, this has been discussed before in the previous videos. Uh, this may well look quite green on camera. Um, I can assure you it does look quite yellow in real life. Um, it's a really, really wonderful color. It's, it's you know, it's unlike, um, you know, we're, we're all familiar with, you know, common green laser pointers. Um, there's various shades of green now. You can get like mint green um, and the regular DPSS green. Uh, but this is really, really nice. Um, the stated specifications is 560 nanometers. So we'll be checking that out with the Raspberry Pi spectrometer. And the rated output power is supposed to be somewhere between 15 and 20 milliwatts. So we'll be checking that as well. But so far, so good. Absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously, I'm going to link in um, Laserland Australia down below. Uh, so do check them out. They've got all sorts of, uh, of laser show equipment as well. And I'm sure if you wanted something odd, um, 
I'm sure they'll entertain the possibility of acquiring that, especially if you don't want to deal with, um, with Alibaba. I don't know if you guys have ever shopped on Alibaba before, uh, but the process for buying things is, is quite, um, it's quite involved. Uh, you know, you have to get into a conversation with the seller and negotiate a deal and negotiate shipping, uh, pay with your, with your bank card. Um, and if, you know, if you're used to paying with things like PayPal and you're used to dealing with, uh, with suppliers that are more closer to home, um, yeah, I'd highly recommend it. Um, like I say, sub $100. In fact, I'm not, not entirely sure how he's managed to sell them at this. Um, you know, I mean, it's 75 US dollars and the thing's in a nice heat sink with a nice fan, a nice driver module um, with analog modulation. Uh, fantastic. Let's get this on the optical bench and run some tests. So I've got set up on the bench here, exactly the same setup as I used to test the license module. You know, in the interest of fairness, we might as well do everything exactly the same. Um, so at the back, we've got a helium neon laser for a reference wavelength to calibrate the spectrometer, uh, 632.8 nanometers. Um, we've got the Melascreo 561 uh, nanometer laser, and then we've got our laser on the test from Laserland. Um, all three of these lasers are directed to my uh, poor man's Spectralon target, which is just PTFE tape um, that's in front of my uh, spectrometer here. Um, if you want to see the video on how I build a spectrometer for a Raspberry Pi, I'll link it in down below. Um, let's remove our beam block so that we can see the output from our laser on the test. Uh, now we can see that the spectrometer has ever so slightly uh, changed, so let's block out the Melis Griot. Um, we can see that we're reading 559 nanometers, um, sort of hovering 558, 550, I think we're stable at 559. Um, pretty interesting, uh, definitely yellow. Um, it's, as, it's certainly as yellow as the other one. It's actually a fantastic color. Um, but yeah, quite interesting. There was some discussion um, on the previous video when, you know, when I first came across these uh, yellow DPSS lasers in the wild, there was some discussion um, as to whether or not the ones from Qingdao license were like directly diode doubled, um, which would be an interesting sort of setup. Uh, I think somebody put in the comments that it was neodymium um, SVAP or some kind of, you know, it's, it's, some, it's, it's one of the latest and greatest laser crystals. Um, and there does seem to be a, a wavelength range that these can oscillate. And it can be anywhere between like 58 nanometers all the way up to like uh, 564 or something like that um, kind of odd uh, but yeah pretty cool you know it's, it's almost bang on the wavelength the way I expected it to be so let's measure the output power of the laser I've got my coherent laser check here and I've already set it up for 558 nanometers uh, which is what we're reading off the homemade spectrometer so let's get in there and measure the output power So we're reading 15.8 milliwatts, which is exactly where it should be. Uh, the advertised range was between 15 and 20 milliwatts, so perfect. Um, I suppose at this stage, uh, what everybody's waiting for is a gratuitous smoke shot, um, so let's do that. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, once again, this may appear green on the camera. Um, it is a fault of all video cameras. It's to do with the way that the, uh, the Bayer layer is, uh, is constructed. Um, maybe talk about Bayer filters in a later video right enough, but most assuredly yellow and an absolutely beautiful beam that is as well. Um, what I'd like to do at this stage, I think, is to strip this optical bench. Um, in a previous video, I was playing around with a little scanner assembly out of, uh, out of a barcode scanner. Um, so let's do, let's do a liquid smoke effect. Um, as a plus side, because this is modulated, uh, or we can modulate it, we can hook it up to a function generator and maybe do something interesting with it as well. So I've got the yellow laser from Laserland set up on the optical bench here. I've got my scanning mirror out of a previous episode where I tore down a barcode scanner. So this mirror scans side to side and I've got that uh, hooked up to a function generator. I'm feeding it about 40 hertz. Also, uh, because this particular yellow laser module has analog modulation, um, I'm actually feeding it a square wave at about 500 hertz. Um, so let's see what happens when we remove the beam block. And we've got this beautiful uh, liquid sky effect um, with nice little gaps in it. Let's just give it a quick blast of the Magican. Absolutely fantastic. I do like to be able to modulate my laser beams. 
So I've just been playing around with the function generator here and you can get some absolutely fantastic effects with very, very little effort. Um, I've got my simple um, barcode scanning mirror at the back here uh, that's been driven about 40 hertz. And if we vary the frequency of uh, modulation, we can get some really, really interesting effects. Some absolutely fantastic effects. I do love the liquid sky effect, but with modulation as well, absolutely superb. So if you're in the market for a yellow modulatable uh, DPSS laser, um, I would highly recommend these modules from Laserland Australia. Um, I'll link them in down below. This is a sponsored video. Uh, no cash has changed hands, but they've sent me the module for free to try out for you guys. Um, and it is, you know, a, a really, really fantastic module. For the price point, for 75 US dollars or $100 Australian, um, absolutely superb. Um, especially if you don't want to deal with the likes of uh, Alibaba, it is a very sort of complicated process and honestly made me really nervous purchasing yellow modules from them um, so it's really nice just to be able to dump some money through PayPal uh, and get hold of one of these. Um, the scanner mirror itself remember that came from a previous video you know you just tore out of, a, out of a barcode scanner so if you want to do effects like this really really cheap and easy and um, if you want to get going um, for you know for stage lighting effects or whatever this is absolutely superb um, I'm certain that uh, there'll be some scientific uses for this you know spectroscopy and so forth. Unlike the module from Laysense, this is mounted in a rather nice heatsink. Um, there are four mounting holes underneath. They appear to be M3 to me, but I haven't actually put in a bolt to try them out. But four mounting holes, right? Um, it's not a cylindrical module that can roll around the workbench. Um, it's all fan cooled, so you don't have to worry about uh, temperature too much. Um, I don't really think that these things get particularly warm anyway, but if you're in a hot country or it's a hot time of year, um, certainly useful to be fan cooled. Um, the driver board itself, excellent. Um, I've been able to modulate this up to 500 hertz. I haven't really pushed it like to 20 kilohertz or anything ridiculous like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the upper limit is. Um, maybe if you guys are interested, ask in the comments down below. I'll do a video and we'll really push this thing right to the end and see, uh, see how hard we can push it in terms of um, how fast we can modulate it. Um, but absolutely fantastic nonetheless. Um, many thanks to Paul at Laserland who made this, uh, this video possible. Uh, once again, I'll link them in down below. Do check out their website. They've got some other, you know, if you're into show lasers and stuff like that, um, they've got some uh, plenty of other show lasers to have a look at um, and drool over for sure. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.